Hey tribe, what's good? What's happening? Another vlog for you today. <laughs> Welcome to HD Designs Crochet, HDDC, the champion of the granny square and nurture of the new and aspiring crochet designer. I'm Heather, the designer of granny square patterns for my tribe and mentor, providing resources for those yarn creatives just like you creating income streams from their passion. I went from corporate lawyer being told what to do to full-time self-employed crochet designer doing what pleases my soul and I want all creatives to have the same freedom, to have financial stability, opportunities, independence, to have power of choice, to choose how and when you work. Join me on my mission to change the world one crochet pattern at a time. Hey tribe, what's good, what's happening? Another vlog for you today. I made a decision that I wanted to record a load of vlogs about preparing for baby Taylor, all of the things that I'm making for them, um, just general nesting, the whips, all of that good stuff. So we'll see what happens because um, anyone that's been around will know that this pregnancy has been a little bit rough and so uh, we shall see how much we get recorded, but um, so far my ideas are to take you through the box of yarn that I've put aside for it's all the yarn that I think potentially I could use on baby Taylor projects. Um, then the other thing I wanted to do was to show you one of the blankets that I'm working on and the current whips and then we'll just go from there. Um, I have picked the cart but we're not ordering it until um, a couple months down the line. So, yeah, should we just dive in and see what happens? Um, I think the best thing is zero pressure, zero expectations. Enjoy the crochet content. Couple of things to tell you. First of all is, look at all of these. Granny squares here and granny squares. They are all the way up to here, like there are stacks and stacks of granny squares. I'm just going to put this out there for anybody who is worried or is unaware of this. Crochet can be dangerous to baby baby's fingers because they will wrap their fingers in it and they could twist their fingers around and cut off their circulation. So it is advised that you don't leave crochet with small children which is why I'm making this blanket as more of a forever piece for Baby Taylor. It is something that Baby Taylor can hopefully keep for their lifetime and that it will be something that they love and cherish. If they don't want it when they're older, I'm sure I will find other children within the family to use it with. Um, so yeah, that's just a heads up. You don't need to comment below if it's dangerous. I'm well aware, thank you. And if you weren't aware, now you do, so proceed with caution. <laughs> so let's go through some information that will make this whole vlog just make sense. Okay, so this is baby Taylor. I have married Brad. I am in the process of changing my name when I sort of my life admin out to Taylor. So this is baby Taylor, that's their surname. Um, we decided to keep the gender a surprise and I will go into that further on. So you will hear me refer to Baby Taylor as Baby Taylor, Baby, Them, It, Goldfish. But sometimes I will say he and sometimes I will say she because people keep trying to guess and keep trying to get information out of me. So I'm a trip viewer upon purpose. Um, <laughs> The other information you, that you should know, we are, our due date was originally January 7th, then they changed it to January 6th, then they changed it, January? No, no, no. June 7th, June 6th, um, 2022. And then they've since said, because at every single scan, baby was major, measuring big. And then since then, with the complication that complications that I've had with this pregnancy, they have said that I am not likely to go past 37 weeks, which brings us to the new end date. We can do it, we can get there, of the 14th of May, 
So everything needs to be in place, ideally by the end of April, just so we're covered and it's all in place. Um, the things that I want to do in that time, bearing in mind we're currently in early February, so I've got about three months, is um, decorating. So the changes I want to make to the house, the things that I want to buy for Baby Taylor and the things I want to make for Baby Taylor. So all of those will be covered in different vlogs or across different vlogs. Um, there are quite a few things on my list that I want to make. Um, not as many things on the list to buy, which we'll get into, and a few changes to make. So, um, as I said, I, in terms of changes to the house, let's start with that. Uh, we won't be having a nursery. We, from the very start, I've never wanted a nursery. I think they're beautiful. I love seeing everybody else prepare theirs, but it's just not something that I have ever felt the need for. Um, I don't know if it's a cultural thing. I don't know if it's like an ethnicity thing. I don't know, but it's just never really appealed to me. Although I will quite happily spend hours on Pinterest pinning images of them. But you know, whatever. Um, both Brad and I are very quite minimal and Although we have the space, this room will be Baby Taylor's bedroom at some point in the future. I want a bedside nursery. So um, I'm going to have a crib that is next to our bed in our master bedroom and all of that stuff will be in there. Um, the changing mat, their clothes, all of that will be in and amongst our stuff. Um, simply because that's how we will function as a family. Um, baby Taylor will be next to us for feeding throughout the night and I just know that I would end up migrating all of their clothes into there so I can pick their outfits when I pick mine anyway so I may as well just store them in there. Um, so there's some changes to make to our bedroom because Brad decorated that bedroom before um, I moved into this home so there's some style changes to make then obviously slight moving around of things um, to fit in the crib um, and there's also I've picked the crib so I'm really hoping that I can do a whole vlog of his going to go and get all of that stuff because it's all picked it's all priced up and I'm so excited for that um, and then also we're changing a unit in our bedroom into a larger chest of drawers unit so I can put all of baby Taylor's stuff in there as well as some of my clothes as well um, and I want to be able to do a whole vlog that shows you Baby Taylor's drawers with all of the stuff that I've made, hopefully, and that we've bought and that we've been gifted in there. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to make all of these. I know that babies aren't for everyone. It might not be a time in your life where it's not something you can, um, what's that word? Not associate, but you know what I mean. I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. Hopefully editing me can put the word up there because I can't think. It's not something that you can connect with. It's not where you are in your life. Maybe for whatever reasons you don't want children or you can't have them. And so this could be really hard to watch. So I totally get that. But I do really want to um, capture some of these early moments. Um, I've been thinking about my channel a lot and I know I just want to wipe the slate clean and just start again. Um, it's been very piecemeal and just trying to get to know what I want to put out there and who I want to be and I've got like a really clear direction for it now so Baby Taylor's going to be a big part of all of that. I'm also going to do an entire vlog on hyperemesis which is the pregnancy condition that I've been dealing with. Um, I just put together a vlog of the whole, I want to not only raise awareness of hyperemesis um, and how it's impacted me um, and how I want to help others that have got hyperemesis, but also I wanted to just have like a vlog that is a memory of this pregnancy as well. So yeah, as of today, which is like the 10th maybe of February, it is a thousand now, I know that much. I am actually 
23 and X amount of days pregnant. I am 24 weeks on Saturday. That is six months pregnant. I do not have that long left to go. And <laughs> baby Taylor is looking big. Baby Taylor is looking big up in here. I think the first thing I'm gonna show you is the yarn and as I've said we've got the woodland theme um very earthy very neutral so we're gonna go through the yarn box because I've got a whole amount of yarn let me grab the yarn okay <laughs> a few things a few things to note um as I said 24 weeks almost there is one baby i will refer to them as baby taylor them it goldfish baby because the gender is a surprise <laughs> back when brad and i was talking about trying for baby we discussed names we had names planned and from the very very beginning i didn't want to know the gender but brad really wanted to know the gender and so we decided as a happy compromise that we were gonna find out but keep it to ourselves um and in actual fact i'm actually quite happy that we've done that because this pregnancy has been so very difficult um and there's not been very many there's not been very many moments of joy and excitement but knowing baby Taylor's gender has really helped me to feel like I can bond and that I can really visualize that the end result of baby being here and yeah it's helped a lot in so many different ways it's given me something to hold on to um and I know a lot of friends and family think it's weird that we haven't shared it um but originally I didn't want to know and so it's one of the very few choices that I have had throughout this pregnancy was whether to, we found out the gender or not um because of a whole load of other reasons that we'll go into in another vlog I've not had the choice of my birthing plan where I which hospital I choose or whether it's a home birth, um, different events and things that you would usually do to celebrate. Just things like that haven't been an option, whether it's medical reasons, whether it's um, health reasons or just whatever. So to be able to say that I didn't want to know the gender was like the one thing that I did have a choice about. Um, but then also I didn't want to rob Brad of that because he's been there throughout this. It's his pregnancy as well. He's had to support me in so many different ways every single day. And I didn't want it to be just what I wanted and him miss out. So that's why we came to the compromise of we would find out and not share. Um, generally, people have been fine with it. I don't think they've understood, but they don't need to. It's not their pregnancy. Um, and I haven't really shared the reasons. All I've said is that I didn't want to know. Um, we've had a couple of random comments like, oh, you're so cruel, you're playing games. But it's really, really funny how people um, have like this sense of entitlement that they feel entitled to know all the details of your pregnancy just because they know of you or might be related to you. Um, oh yeah, I could tell you some stories, a lot of people have said you're gonna you're gonna trip up you're gonna let it slip you won't be able to keep it secret but we've still between ourselves are still speak are still referring to baby as baby taylor um and we're still using them so it's not really been any different it just gives me this warm little thing inside that i can hold on to and when it's a really really bad day I can listen to their heartbeat because I've got recordings of their heartbeat from when I've been in hospital and 
I can I just like visualize bathing baby Taylor and just little things like that and that just it just helps so so much so I'm telling you that because um you might not even be aware of what gender baby Taylor is I might like do some sort of quizzes on Instagram and see what people say and um might do like a name reveal and a gender reveal in one of these vlogs <laughs> I just think that would be really really cute uh, and something I can do in dribs and drabs on good days so yeah I've told you about the the gin, gin, gender I've told you that the gender is a surprise because we've gone with really neutral colors um there is a theme I wanted a like a woodland theme um and I wanted it very neutral very earthy um and I actually made a entire like mood board vision board um and it's got like the different outfits and the different color schemes and that's actually been really really useful um my mum is a crocheter and she's making baby Taylor a blanket and so I told her what the brief was and I've seen the colors it's spot on spot on with the theme um so we're going to be having like a bedside nursery um like a co-sleeping setup it's actually the guidance within the uk that baby sleeps with you certainly for at least the first six months within their own crib not in your bed there isn't a huge amount of decoration that needs to be done in terms of we're not converting this room but i really want a woodland themed and i want it quite earthy and neutral um i'm thinking like well i'll show you the colors because i got a whole box of yarn here this bang on um so we wanted it also to be gender neutral because originally i wasn't going to find out if it was a boy or a girl i wanted everything to just work for both but also if we choose to have another child i wanted to be able to reuse some of the items regardless of their gender as well when i show you the box of yarn i don't think you will outright look at it and think boy girl like, I don't think you'll form that because it is so, so neutral. So, let me see. Let me see what you think, okay? This is all of the yarn that I've put aside for Baby Taylor. Now, <laughs> I've spent a lot of time in bed and I, to be honest, I kept, I started to feel a bit sorry for myself thinking, I don't have the yarn to make anything for Baby Taylor. I've got nothing appropriate. Um... I don't have the money, how, how am I going to do all of this? And so then when I um, had a couple of good days after my last, uh, the last time I was released from hospital a couple of weeks ago, I emptied out this tub that had like a load of abandoned whips in it, sorted all of them out. I went through all of my tubs and put all of the yarn here that I could use. And as you can see, there is a hefty amount. I also then went and added a little bit of yarn to it as well. Um, as I said, I don't think by looking at this, you would outright say boy or girl because of the woodland theme. I think you will see the theme, but I don't think there's a gender. I'm hoping not because if we were to have another child, I want to reuse a lot of these things. Um, and I'd love to save some of them and in the future, my grandchildren could. That's gonna make me tear up. My grandchildren could use this. So what I'm gonna do is put this tub down and show you show you the yarns and then I think we'll depend on how long that takes and then might do another vlog that shows you the patterns that I'm thinking of making. Then I've also got the things I've already made, the things I'm working on. So yeah should we do it um let's do it okay i just wanted you to see it from this point of view so you could see like it's quite a decent sized tub just the label say it's a 50 litre storage tub and the lid doesn't actually fit on it at the moment because i've completely overpiled it um 
in there is some of baby Taylor's stuff that I've made part of a whip that I want to make and an ongoing whip and I'm just going to show you these because oh my goodness aren't they so pretty oh, I'm so excited okay so I think the best thing for me to do is empty a load of this out and then we'll just go through it and I think I'm going to prop myself up I'm going to sit there prop myself up and we're going to go through it okay Welcome to Baby Taylor's Yarn Stash. <laughs> now, forgive me, I'm a little bit out of breath. I'm not used to this extra weight and just getting myself so, so excited. You can see the granny squares up there. <laughs> That's going to be part of one of Baby Taylor's blankets. And in this tub, to give you a really quick little peek, it's a white company box and um inside it is some things that i've made for baby taylor so bearing in mind that we're going gender neutral um and although i am going to say we're going gender neutral so we're staying neutral and we've got a woodland theme so earthy neutral tones the only thing that's kind of breaking that brief is the granny squares because i just feel like that colourful scrappy granny square is like my trademark and my child has to have one um so let's just dive in we will start from the top and work our way down it's a 50 litre storage tub so there's a fair bit and as i said um i was getting a little bit like sorry for myself thinking i just i don't have the yarn i'm looking at my huge yarn stash i don't have the yarn to make baby tail or anything what am i gonna do um and so I spent a bit of time researching yarns and just looking at um, what fibres are good for them, what you shouldn't use, um, and then decided to dive into my stash. So obviously do your own research and use your own judgment, but um, mohair is a no because of the fibres that can be that can come away and children can inhale. Um, the other thing is that their skin could be sensitive to wool um so if you wanted to go like 100 percent wool your child might have um it might be itchy they might not feel comfortable in it they could have a reaction also that if you use wool and other fibers like that um you might only be able to hand wash them and if your child is sick on themselves which babies do then you're gonna have a lot of hand washing so um Natural fibres such as cotton are really, really great. Bamboo, things like that, really, really useful. Um, wool, maybe not so much, unless it was like a, a heavier outer garment. And um, acrylic is just really, really good because in terms that you can just throw it in the washing machine and not worry about it too much. So um, I've got this paint box yarns, it's an Aran. Um, it's the, in this sky blue and I'm really liking certain elements um, such as clouds, the sky, tree lines and woodland creatures within our theme. So this is perfect. Um, it's 100 grams. You actually get quite a bit out of 100 grams can go really, really far. Um, I've made, I'm in the process of making a couple of Aran jumpers and cardigans. So once I've weighed them and I figure out how much it used, this might make like an entire cardigan or something. So um, this was gifted to me by a friend who was having a yarn de-stash. So I've put that in there. Um, I'm also thinking of potentially doing something with it that's like cloud themed. Um, 
Another yarn that I will be using for Baby Taylor is this black glitter. Uh, this is just simply acrylic. They come in 50 gram skeins and it's from the pound shop in the UK. You get three balls for a pound, so 150 grams for a pound. Um, I, I think it's just my trademark. You know me as the granny squares and the colorful granny squares joined in black and I love joining them in black glitter. The only thing about it is that it attracts Albie hair, which you've seen me pulling out. Um, Albie is my dog, if you're not aware of him. I'll try and put a picture up or a video of him. Albies. Pussy, pussy. Are you on our bed again? Hello. Hello. My happy boy. My big baby. Are you super happy? Hmm? Do you make everything really hairy? Yes. Yes, you do. And he's like this red colour. And so black just attracts his hair and it's a bit of a pain in the bottom. There we go. Um, and oh, as I should say to you, I'm going to be making Baby Taylor a blanket and it involves this teddy blanket. Um, I'm just going to caveat in case you haven't already heard me say, I am well aware that crochet isn't great for little fingers, that they can trap their fingers in it. Um, babies and children can twist their fingers in the crochet and it can cut off their circulation. I am well aware of that. Um, but I want to make them a granny square blanket because I just think my child needs one and I'm hoping this will be something that they will use into much later life. Um, so yeah, I've got plans to use that as well. And again, I'm really liking the sunshine colours and all of those elements. Um, then we have got a load of Mr B yarn. Now, Claire of Bird Street Yarns, Mr. B Yarns, reached out to me a little while ago and said they had a load of yarn that was like their end of line. They weren't going to be using it anymore. Could I make use of it? Yeah, I can. So they sent a load to me and originally I was going to split it with my grandma, um, who's been like shielding because of the pandemic. So I haven't seen her in a long time. Um, but then... When I was going through all of the yarn I've got, I realised that a lot of this would be really good for Baby Taylor. Um, so I've spoken to her and all of this is now in Baby Taylor's tub. If whatever I don't use, I will pass on, but I have got some really good ideas. So first up is this more orangey colour. And I think that's like, like a really autumnal leaf colour, um, which goes with the woodland theme because it's like... The leaves have come off and all of that sort of stuff um and pumpkin it's called mutadine i think that's how you say it m-u-t-e-n-d-e -E. um it's a hundred percent superwash bfl um which is blue faced leicester and it's arim now these are all going to be hand wash so they're going to need to be treated with the utmost care um but because it's my child and I won't be gifting these knits away. I'm more than happy to do that. Um, I've got 200 grams in that colour. And again, as I said, I'm currently working on some Aran patterns. And once I know how much they use up for the sizes, then I'll be able to uh, like give these to patterns, allocate them to patterns. I've also got this grey clouds. Um... It is quite a chunky Aran, or, or like I'm not even sure if that is chunky or not, but I don't know whether whether it's because it's a looser twist. Um, but I'm thinking like something cloud, maybe a blanket. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking with that, but I've got 200 grams in that grey. Um... I'm now just realising that there is more somewhere. I wonder where that went. I'll find it. 
then in this bag i've got more mr b i've got the asparagus it's the same base that i think this was the base that they discontinued but you can get these colorways um and i've got again 200 grams of the green i think that's absolutely gorgeous and i could make something so so beautiful out of it and if i don't make them into individual outfits i could potentially put them all together and make a blanket the woodland themed blanket that i wanted to make yeah so there's um 200 grams of the asparagus as well but then i also have 400 grams of this color which is their sprout color which is a much deeper green i absolutely love it i did do a tiny little swatch a little while ago so you can see it's gorgeous um and then also i have 200 grams of this color which is called ray and i absolutely love it i'm loving the yellow and yellow actually links with one of the baby names that we have picked out so i was really keen to incorporate that and i just think it's such a happy color anyway so there's 200 grams of that and again i'm leaning towards a blanket so that i can have sunshine colors i could have maybe sunshine appliques or i don't know if i'd knit it or crochet it but sunshine um so put that back in here so we've already got 200 grams of that plus 200 grams of that plus 200 grams of that plus 200 grams of the yellow plus then there's 400 grams of that green and there is another gray and i've realized it's not in my stash in this tub and so i must have put it somewhere but I can't see where, but there was a darker gray, like a steel color. And I think there was 200 grams of that, if not more. And then there's also this, and this is called Jasper. I absolutely love this color. There's 300 grams of this. It's just gorgeous. It's absolutely stunning. I think Jasper is named after their Jack Daniels range. And I've got some four ply that also use the same I also absolutely love the name Jasper and it is a contender if we were to go on and have a boy in the future. Um, so 300 grams of that, I could make a pretty decent outfit out of that as well. Um, there's some black sock yarn in here. It's cotton, sorry. Black four ply cotton. Um, because Baby Taylor is due in May, they're going to need some breathable springtime outfits and a lot of the Aaron outfits will be made for the winter when they're like about six months old so a lot of the cotton and lighter yarns will be used to make the um newborn um up to three month size and then the heavier yarns i will be using to make the six months plus sizes there also is there's always that gamble that your baby comes out big because um baby taylor's had two cousins born in january and one of them was nine pound and one of them was eight pound and the nine pound baby basically didn't fit in the nought to three months for more than a couple of weeks so um if i was to have a big whopper of a baby they might not fit in any of the hand knits um <laughs> So that's why I've kind of decided that the majority of what I'm making is going to be in the bigger sizes because they will grow into it eventually. Um, but I'll come into that in another vlog. I've got this, it's a leftover skein from Mr B Yarn that I purchased at a yarn festival. I think this is called Sugar and Maple and it's gorgeous. It's got the ever so slight bit of like okra or amber um, and it's got little pops of purple and then it's got the woody brown that I just absolutely love at the moment. I've actually made um, a flax light and some socks out of this. So I'll show you that at some point in a vlog. Um, and then I also have this Mr. B skein, which again, 100 grams of 
um, four ply. I need to rewind it because it's a little bit tight. Um, and this one, I can't remember the name of this one, but it is another Jack Daniels inspired one and it's gorgeous. And it's really like a honey rich colour. The name might have honey in it, to be honest. Um, that's quite likely to become a cardigan, I think. Um, I put this one in here. I don't know that I will use it, but it was a contender. Um, it is black rose and it's a really it's a deep black but it's got little bits of purple that actually fade out to almost a brown um so that is a contender as well i could potentially use that if not i will use it on me um it will go back into my main stash but one of the things i was thinking of doing is making mummy and baby matching socks and this could be a good one for that uh i don't think it's too girly i don't think it's particularly masculine so I think that could work really well. What do you think? Again, it picks up a lot of hair, so I'm sorry. Um, this is some DK yarn that needs ripping down. Um, but these are the sorts of tones I was going for. And I picked out this yarn to start another whip. So there's extra there if I need it. I think that is sheepies, I think. Um, so let's do this one as well. Aaron, a big chunk of Aaron here. This is um, from Aldi. I made my first Aaron cardigan out of this. So I really like the sort of having mummy and baby matching. How cute would that be? Um, there's just under 400 grams of it here. So I could do loads of things for baby. Um, again, it'd be their winter wardrobe, so I'd be making the larger size. And um, I really, really like the colour. Really, really like the colour. It's mainly acrylics, so it'll wash really well as well. Um, then I have this one, which is Aaron. And if I was to make a blanket, I would do a lot of neutral with the colours in there. I think that would look really good. Um, I actually started to make, the very first thing I started to make Baby Taylor was with this. And I made, started making a little Aaron cardigan. And I made the newborn size. And since then I've changed my strategy that most, well, all of the Aaron weight stuff should be from six months and above, for, ready for winter for Baby Taylor. However, I really wanted them to have some sort of knitwear or crochet wear as part of their coming home outfit just so I could take pictures. Even if then I can't wear it because it's too hot, just take a picture and take it off. So um, I think I'm going to continue with that whip. The reason I put it to one side is because when I was working on it is when the nausea really started to kick in and when the sickness started and I was trying to work on it whilst having a lot of sickness. And so every time I picked it up, I just associated it with being sick and I just, I couldn't bear to look at it. And now that I feel like I'm in a better place when I went back to it, I just need to sit down and really figure out where I am. I think I just started decreasing on the sleeves. It just needs a little bit of brain power, but I've kind of just put it to one side. So I think I'm going to finish it in the newborn size, but then I'm also going to make one much bigger, ready for when baby is older so that they can have a bigger version for winter as well. And then I figured the smaller version could always go on a teddy bear um, as a reminder that that was one of their very first outfits. So I've got, I don't know, maybe 200 grams of that left and I need to finish the one that I've started and then I wanted to make a bigger size. So potentially could do with getting some more of the neutral. Um, but basically their winter wardrobe is going to be like, a hoodie with an oversized Aaron cardigan or an Aaron jumper um, with like fluffy accessories and leggings and joggers and cute outfits like that. Um, even if I have a girl, I'm not going to be like over the top with the frilly and the cute, but I'll be going in on the floral print to go with the woodland theme. So take from that what you want. Um, 
I also have this denim in my stash. These are the last of the untouched balls. And I thought that would be really cute to make a little jumper or cardigan. And that that would get them through um, from babies born in May. But I could potentially make this in more of a newborn size or three months or three to six months because um, it's slightly lighter, not as heavy. And also um, they might need it for like the cooler evenings if we've gone out or I don't know, something like that. So that's cute. So this is denim. It's um, old yarn that my mum gifted me. It's Sardar Denim Tweed DK. I did start making loads of granny squares out of it. Um, so potentially I could just finish putting them together as another granny square blanket or I might make an outfit I've got lots of choices, lots of options um, <laughs> fluffies so let's get one of these out uh, a couple of years ago I bought loads of different yarns just to experiment with and I really like the fluffy yarns so I got loads of different ones um, and I got all neutrals then <laughs> which I did get some pinks as well but I got a lot of neutrals perfect for the woodland colours now again caveat disclaimer don't come at me in the comments I know that baby shouldn't be breathing in these fibres I need to be careful um, and I will be and also um use your own judgment if you want feel that it'd be safe or not that is up to you i don't need to know but i decided that because i bought like 100 gram or 50 gram skeins there's enough there to make pairs of booties and mitts and possibly even hats um and so i've made a pair already they're in the whip box you will see them at some point out of um I made these great big swatches back when I wanted to see how the, the yarn worked up and so I've gathered them all up and I actually undid one of them and made a pair of booties and mittens. Oh my gosh, it's so, so cute. And just imagine like, um, for example, a hoodie in this colour with some leggings to go with and then booties and mittens in this so cute so i've got a load more of these here um which i could use to make more booties and hats um so if you have any other ideas of what i could make that would be cute in this sort of yarn let me know um because whether it's accessories i might try and just make a complete like hoodie or cardigan or something in some of it again you don't need a lot of yarn for babies which is pretty cool it goes really far so i've got loads of it and i just i am so love it it's so soft if you wanted to get any of this yarn yourself then you just need to search for teddy yarn or fur yarn or um fashion yarn and they'll come up but i've got i've got quite a bit of this to use up having already used some so that will keep me busy for a while without a doubt um there's more iron in here this is pure white so i potentially could finish the smaller one in that and make the bigger version in the white uh i just think white's gonna get dirty really really quick but it's in stash it needs using up um they're all just acrylics i don't have the ball bands on them but um a lot of them were just like Audi, they come in like a 400 gram ball. Um, oh, I do have the grey. This is the Mr. B slate grey. I've got 200 grams of that. Again, great for a boy and a girl. The woodland theme. Um, this child's going to have a lot of Aaron outfits. <laughs> I might potentially make matching outfits for the baby tailor, like team baby tailor and their cousin. Um, well, the family friend. So the family have had um, Louis, Isaac and Grace, and then there'll be baby Taylor. Three out of the four are Taylors and another one is the family friend. Wouldn't it be really cute if they all had like the same outfit, but all different colours? Um, that would be really cute. So I might do that because I think 
the Taylor grandparents would absolutely love to see them in the matching outfits. So maybe that's a Christmas idea. You've got little off bits of this because I had another ball of that. Um, pretty sure this is Aaron as well and it's a lighter grey. I think that was a paint box and that was gifted to me. Again, clouds. I think something like that's going to have to happen. A bit more denim in there. Um, this is a navy Aaron. This is like... I don't know. I don't know if I'll use that, but I do think it could fit in with the woodland like as a midnight type thing. I only have about 100 grams of that. So it might end up going into accessories rather than an actual thing. Or maybe that I might have like bits of this left and I use like, I do cuffs in that. I don't know. There's options. I got a lot of options. Um, then I also went and purchased this from Hobbycraft. It is the Women's Institute Premium Acrylic Yarn. It's 100 grams, it's double knit, it's exclusive to Hobbycraft, and the colour doesn't have a name, but it's 21 forward slash 2972. Um, it calls for, it says there's 250 metres in here, it's 100% acrylic, and it says 4mm needles or hooks, um, which is a US size six. Oh, sorry the shade colour is honey and i absolutely love it um i bought three of them because i have a project in mind for this i wanted to make um baby taylor a like a, a romper or a onesie so i wanted it all to be in one colour and then whatever's left some of it will go into granny squares for their project as well that'd be really cute um yeah don't know when i'm gonna get around to doing that one um but there's a pattern in mind that i specifically want to use that on i don't know how much i'll have left over because i've i've overbought without a doubt because it going off the um yardage and meterage that it gave i think i probably need could have got away with two of them quite easily but i got a third um so potentially could be putting some of that into another project and then um, I've got black fluffy. I don't know if I'll be using that to be honest because it just collects the hair and the fluff. Can't be dealing with it. Um, and then four ply. Again, sticking with like the woodland colour scheme. I've just gone through my sock yarn box and picked out anything that I think could be used for um, socks, mittens, hats, anything like that um maybe even a little blanket because this yarn will go really far won't it um maybe they need a four ply granny square one as well who knows um so all different ones here none of them have got labels on i know the gray is coops knit the yellow i remember buying it ages ago and i can't remember who from now the brown is commercial again with the green i bought that hand dyed the blue and the navy is commercial. Um, I've got abandoned whips in here that I could rip down and use this green to make something. I think there's like 100 grams of it. So that could go really far. I also pulled out these minis um, that could be used. So I could do with like a cute blanket maybe. I don't know I've got loads of stuff I could use plus there's this black twine I don't know if I'll use it but again it's a possibility not looking as lightly bit more teddy and then the wild cards are these neon they don't go with the woodland at all but I just absolutely love them and I think an arrow with a tiny neon pop would be so so cute um, and again, I could do matching socks with these or accessories. Um, and I think an outfit in this colour, but then something with this would just look really cute. Might go with the denim. Neutrals and neons are the one that I'm telling you. And then there's just little bits of um, brown in there. 
so that is all of my baby tailor yarn there's me thinking i didn't have very much and actually i've got loads and also how many hand knits does a baby need because they're gonna have blankets gifted to them from their grandmother and great grandmother and accessories um there's only so many things they can wear in their first six months so yeah a lot of this will be for the winter onwards and also how much do i think i'm going to be able to make in three months because as you know i've been in and out of hospital i haven't been making very much um i haven't been making very much so am i going to get through all of this yarn mm, maybe not so let's put a load of this back and comment below with whatever yarn you think is your favorite or if you've got patterns that you want to suggest um and if you've got ideas for accessories i can use the teddy on then anything like anything like that then comment below and let me know um i'm really interested to see what you are going to suggest because um i'm hoping to get a few more things made ready for baby taylor um the main thing is i want part of their coming home outfit to have handmade in it and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make um i think i'm gonna make like a newborn sort of size and i'm also gonna make a slightly bigger one so that um regardless of how big baby taylor is their outfit should fit them so i hope you've enjoyed watching this with me I've really enjoyed going through it all with you and I hope that um, if any of you are expecting or you want to do any gift knits that it gives you ideas and that you don't do what I do and stress about having lots of yarn and you don't need it. Um, babies are really small so the yarn goes really really far. And you don't have to buy fancy handmade, hand-dyed skeins because um, depending on who you're gifting it to, acrylic might be the best way forward. So let's put all of this away. Ooh, look at that as a combo. Hmm. I am going to do another vlog that goes through the patterns that I've already found or purchased or downloaded that I want to make and I'm going to, um, I have quite a few because obviously it's quite a bit of yarn and I'm also then going to do a vlog that shows you what I've already made because I have made a fair few things already. Um, so that should be really good as well. And then um, I'll just keep updating you as I make more and more things on what I've added. So yeah. Uh, let's get this all put away. I've made my foot go numb as well. Floopies. Picked up some mess. Hmm. Okay, and the way I've repacked that, it's quite neat. Might even get the lid on it. Okay, so thank you for watching. This is Baby Taylor's Yarn Pot, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.